a summer filled with clouds, a new camera to test in my hands. Big in size, heavy in weight and with capabilities that astonished me many times. My name is Tim, I'm an Astro Addict and this is the QHY268C. This camera has been with me since last June. It was sent to me from QHY for review and I did not receive or will receive any compensation and sadly it has to go back in January. The QHY268C is an advanced astrophotography camera used for long exposure deep sky astrophotography. I know that this is not the first review of this camera on YouTube, that's why I will leave this one a little more personal, with a focus on my own experiences and less on technical specs. Things that I consider important to know. You can look up specifications and adapters and everything on the QHY website anyways. An APS-C camera with a Sony IMX571 sensor. Resolution 26 megapixels, 16 bits and a cooling down to 35 degrees below ambient temperature. The sensor dimensions alone are an upgrade from my previous camera. I know it's not fair to compare the ASI-294 to this one, they are in completely different price ranges. But maybe these comparisons can be helpful for anyone who wants to upgrade from a beginner level astronomy camera. The pixel size is 3.76 microns, which means that this camera is great for short and medium range focal lengths. Anything from between 300 to 1000 millimeters, let's say. Smaller pixels, smaller scopes. That's what I learned in this hobby. You can of course use this camera with any type of telescope you want. But keep in mind that if you use a long focal length telescope like a reflector, the images can turn out kind of blurry, but nothing post-processing can't fix. I used this camera with my TechnoSky refractor and the bigger Omegon refractor. This bigger than before sensor covered a greater field of view and I was able to capture the Veil Nebula in its entirety with 350 millimeters. And it looked kinda great. As I said in the beginning, this summer was particularly bad, with only a few clear nights. Plus I had to fight with a lot of equipment issues during that time. I was only able to capture three good images with this camera. Not very much, but here they are. The image of the Veil Nebula is one of the best I've ever taken. Processing it was so much fun thanks to the great resolution and low noise levels. The speed at which it captures images with a very sensitive sensor is mind-blowing. This right here is a single 2 minute stretched sub of the Veil Nebula Gain 70. If I wanted to achieve the same thing with the 294, I would need at least 3 times as much exposure time. A new and difficult aspect for me was the option to play around with the readout modes. With this camera you can choose between 4 different readout modes. Basically how the images are saved inside the camera. Selecting the right mode for your target and nightly conditions can be a very extensive task, which I can only try to simplify. QHY has many graphs on their website showing how the different readout modes behave, depending on the gain setting. You can see that the conversion, essentially how much data is collected, will decrease with higher gain. The four different colors represent the readout modes. This graph in a nutshell means that lower gain results in more signal received. In the next one you see that the readout noise will decrease with higher gain in an interesting way for photographic and high gain mode. Full well will decrease with higher gain as is usual and dark current will decrease with lower temperature, who would have guessed. From reading these graphs I concluded that a gain of 30 will be an optimal choice in most cases and I set the exposure time accordingly. 
Small side story, a story of personal experience. The default settings on the QHY are a gain of 102 with an offset of 70. And naturally, I went with those settings with the first exposure of the Veil Nebula. The resulting image was so bright and overexposed. Gain 102, 2 minute exposure only with the Optolon L Extreme filter. Overexposed. I'll let that sink in. The next topic that I think can be interesting to you is the dark noise. Here is a dark frame from my older camera, the ASI-294. And this one is the same from the QHY, same exposure, same temperature and equivalent gain. Just saying. With amp glow reduction technology, this camera has basically zero amplifier glow, which I know can cause many troubles in post-processing. The dark noise at low temperatures is so incredibly low that most of the time's readout noise will be the dominant feature. That, combined with the backwards illuminated sensor, results in amazing sensitivity and an amazing signal-to-noise ratio in short and long exposed images. I suppose that many of you would like a comparison, this camera and maybe the ASI 2600, cameras in the same price range. The problem is, I don't own any other cameras in that price range. So I will leave you with some suitable reviews down in the description below. After all of this, would you believe me if I said that I don't like some things about this camera? Attaching this camera to the back of a telescope was challenging. Using it with the TechnoSky refractor with its screw-only adapter, I had to use the adapter ring along with every extension ring that was available. This system of attaching the extension rings with bolts to the camera body, not a fan. The only other aspect I didn't like, there are no extra USB ports on the back. Maybe I'm just spoiled from using the 294, but having those extra ports on the back to connect the guide camera and filter wheel to really makes cable management a lot easier. Kind of disappointed that I could not do that. Giving final thoughts on this, in my opinion, is always a bit challenging. This camera is made for advanced astrophotographers, who want to upgrade from either a modified DSLR or dedicated astro camera. It will definitely overwhelm a beginner and should only be purchased if you know what you are doing. But if you know, it delivers. This camera has one job, to take amazing images of the night sky. And it succeeds in every single aspect of that. On a scale from 1 to 10. On a scale from worst camera in existence to best camera for advanced astrophotographers. I give this camera a 9.5 out of 10. While preparing for this video I might have overlooked something that some people could deem important. If that's the case I will leave some links and an explanation in the description below to back it up. Also, don't forget to check out the comments to see if anyone else is sharing their opinion on this camera. The attentive viewer might have seen that I haven't posted in a long time and that I'm recording from a different room. Due to an internship I had to move to a different city and I sadly can't use my telescope here for the backyard is about 2 meters long and wide and there's no fence around here. So I sadly can't use the telescope in this half year. <laughs> For these next now only 5 months actually, I will not be able to take many images or record videos. And I know that's devastating to views and subscriber growth on YouTube, but that's just how it is. Astro Addict is a long term project and it can only get better with time. I will stay active in the comments and in any other way I can. I'm even trying myself at landscape photography now. This channel will definitely not switch over to landscape, but I just want to spend at least some time with photography, even if it isn't astro. Because without astro photography there would be a big hole in my life. I guess my girlfriend would be happy if I said that to her. And as always, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies, and may the night be with us.